You probably heard this line New Zealand really needs people in tech. But is that actually true? In this video I'm going to break down the real ID job market in New Zealand. What's easier, what's competitive and what you absolutely need to know before planning your move. By the end you will have a realistic picture not hype, not negativity, just a truth. A quick note before we move forward, I'm not an immigration agent, consultant or a career coach. I'm just sharing what I have seen here in New Zealand based on my personal experience and opinions and observations. Things may change, so take this as an insight, not a guarantee. And thank you all for the love on this channel. I read every comments and even if I don't respond uh, individually, my goal is simple to share honest insights. I try to read all your comments and try to share insights so you don't make informed decisions. So in my last video, many of you asked for insights about the IT market specially. So here is a clear overview of the New Zealand tech landscape. Later, I'll also make a separate video for people asking on other industries, showing simple tools and frameworks so you can research any industry on your own. So New Zealand's tech scene is small but active. We have uh, big local names like Tatacom, Zero, TradeMe, and even few fast-growing startups. Even FANG companies like uh, Microsoft have a presence here, but they mostly hire for senior roles or internal transfers. Most local companies are small to medium businesses, so teams are lean and they focus heavily on delivery over training. So if you're thinking getting a developer job will be easy, let me show you why it's more competitive than people think. This part surprises most newcomers. There are graduate opportunities, but not enough to match the number of students graduating from New Zealand universities and the polytechs. So there are literally thousands of graduate every year, but only a limited number of uh, entry level roles are available or they appear and go fast. That's why most job ads ask for two to three years of experience. It's not that companies don't value freshers. They definitely do. But small teams simply don't have the time, budget or the bandwidth to train someone from scratch. Now let's break the market into simple categories so you know where the competition is and where your strengths might fit. So support and operations role. Roles like L1, IT support, help desk, desktop support. Uh, these roles always uh, exist but they are very very competitive. Why? Because you don't need a, a computer science degree. Uh, a customer service, problem solving and basic certifications are often enough and also people from uh, business and non-engineering backgrounds or career switches can also apply. So a lot of applicants versus the job openings. That's as simple as I can say. Now the second is core engineering. Roles like um, full stack, backend, frontend, cloud, DevOps, network engineering. This is where real technical work happens. So long term growth is great, but usually these roles expect strong hands on experience. Entry level engineering roles are rare and go very fast. Now data and analytics, roles like uh, data engineer, data scientist, data analyst. Um, these are mid senior roles and are still in demand, but entry level analyst roles appear more frequently than data engineering or science, but again, very competitive because many people switch careers into analytics often from um, a business background and doing small certification and using tools and dashboards. That's all required. Now niche roles like UI and UX. Most small companies can't afford full design teams. So front end developers often do basic UI and UX and uh, business analysts often overlap with uh, product teams. Now for um, some other like mechatronics, electronics, low embedded codings, mostly in manufacturing hardware or um, automation companies. Niche roles have opportunities, but pathways are uh, narrower than other engineering roles. If you're finding this useful, don't forget to hit like. Uh, it really helps this channel grow and also subscribe if you want to stay updated with life in New Zealand. Now, where does AI fit in all this? Let's talk about that next. AI is everywhere right now, but let's cut the hype. AI is not replacing developers anytime soon. Um, it's helpful for prototypes, but large-scale secure systems still need engineering, real engineering. So most New Zealand companies aren't building their own models. They are integrating the existing AI tools into their SaaS products. So uh, yes, um, AI engineering roles do exist, but they require experience in architecture, integration and LLMs. So not suitable for uh, freshers. 
There are startups experimenting with AI in LLMs, but still too early to comment on the ROI. So do research and see if that aligns with your goals if you join one. And AI has mainly changed the uh, productivity expectations. Companies do expect smaller teams to deliver more. And uh, to be honest, that's the real shift with AI. Now let's uh, look at how contracts and outsourcing really shape the market. It might surprise you. So many large companies have their main tech teams in Australia and New Zealand teams are smaller and leaner. Um, and also to manage costs, a lot of work goes to contractors or outsource agencies. And um, that's why New Zealand has many contract roles, good pay, but short term. So if you uh, prefer flexibility, great. But if you want long term stability, you need to choose carefully. Now, you might be wondering why hiring seems slower than before globally and not just New Zealand. Let's zoom out a bit and take a look at how the market evolved. A few years back, IT demand skyrocketed as companies moved from old legacy systems to the cloud solutions. And right after COVID, hiring peaked, lots of openings, fast salaries, the whole boom. And fast forward to now, most migrations are done. The market has cooled and budgets are tighter and hiring is slower. So most of the companies are now focusing on optimization and profitability and not expansion. And that's why. So not because tech is dying. Is just because the demand has normalized. Um, there are more skilled people than uh, open roles. Like any market, it moves in cycles. This is just one phase. So I always say demand and supply drives everything. The sooner we accept this, the better decisions we can make. So what does all this mean for you if you're planning your move? If you're coming for a master's, try to get two to three years of experience first. It makes a huge difference in job search. And if you're a strong programmer and want cutting edge tech or extremely fast growth um, Australia the US or Europe might give you more opportunities but uh, if you value work-life balance nature and a peaceful environment and you're okay with a, a slower pace New Zealand can be fantastic um, it's not about which country is better it's about the uh, lifestyle you want so that's the honest reality the New Zealand IT market is small but stable um, right now, there are more candidates than openings, but that's just not a natural uh, cycle of any market. The smart move is to position yourself for the next wave, gain solid experience wherever you are, keep your skills current and understand where the markets are investing next. Um, New Zealand may not have the fastest growing tech market, but with the right approach, you can absolutely build a great career here. Before we wrap up, just a quick reminder, this channel isn't only about the job markets. I've got more content coming up to help newcomers navigate daily life here and nothing fancy just uh, practical stuff that actually makes life easier when you are new so if you have any questions about anything like housing travel lifestyle or settling here drop them in the comments and i'll try to make uh, content around those topics thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one